Alright, so guys, I just want to get right to the point. This video will be really wrong. What? Wrong. Long. So, as you can see by the title, today we got a mock draft. But first, there's one thing further ado. For this video only, so, there's a little thing called Waldo. Waldo, sorry. And he's right here. This thing right here. He's going to appear throughout some point in this video. And whoever can find him first and leave that time in the comments first will get a shout out in next video it's not like comment out the video it's not like shout out to this guy it's gonna I'll like shout out your channel now i don't want you guys just like searching like throughout the whole video watch my mock draft and then watch this video again to see if you can find it or if you just see it randomly just comment that time down below this is only a one-time thing so it's not like it's gonna happen in every single video no free shout outs over here but yeah this one time just leave the time if you see it and let's get right into this video with the first pick in the 2018 NBA draft, the New York Knicks select Taco. No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. All right. They're taking Zion Williams, and obviously, there's like no if and buts. Is that what they say? If and buts about it? Zion is an undisputed first pick in the draft. We've never seen an NBA player with his build, with his crazy body type. Now you guys might be saying, LeBron was the last one with his like sort of body. Well, no, I actually at one point, LeBron was actually kind of skinny. I know that's like not like something that you guys could like picture, but there was one point where LeBron was skinny. Zion was never skinny. Now he's not fat, but he's just big. You know, he's a big guy and he's only like six, seven and has his freaking vertical that he could jump that high he's he's the number one pick he's it's insane and with the number two pick i have the phoenix suns drum roll please <laughs> taking ja Morant. now i think if this was the 2017 draft class ja Morant would be the first pick in the draft i, I would take ja Morant over markel fultz any day obviously everybody would but like Without knowing that Markel would be a bust, I would still take John Morant over him. Like, John Morant is a number one pick caliber type player in this draft. And who has this pick? The Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns have been starting Devin Booker at point guard for the last, like, 20 games. And that's not how Devin Booker strives. They've been putting Tyler Johnson in and out of the starting lineup. Bottom line, the Suns do not have a starting caliber point guard. As my homeboy... Okay, that was really cringy. I'm not gonna say that again. I'm not saying that. It's not gonna be said again. Don't worry. As my YouTube friend, Mojo99 has stated in one of his videos, the Suns are a rebuilding team, but they're not getting better at all. And I think if they draft John Morant, I think he could become the cornerstone of that franchise. And trust me, John Morant has the potential to be one of the best point guards in this league. He could score so easily. And the fact that he was doing that with his Murray State team, which didn't really have a lot of good players. If his game translate perfectly into the NBA, he could definitely be a 25 point, 12 assist, eight rebound person. Now with the third pick, Cleveland Cavaliers select RJ Barrett. Now I feel like number one and number three were obvious. It depends who would go number two. If RJ Barrett went number two, then it would be obvious that John Morant would go number three. But we all knew there, the, the Knicks were gonna take Zion and whoever was taking number two, we knew who would, who would be taking number three. So this one's really obvious. I have RJ Barrett. Yeah, I know I have the same top three as a lot of other people, but you can't really avoid what you think, you know? So this is what I think, this is what I think. Did I just, why did I just say that twice? RJ Barrett is just a dynamic scorer. He's just a really good college prospect. And I personally believe that he has the potential to become a 23, 24 point scorer. And he could be one of the cornerstones to the Cleveland Cavaliers franchise too. Now here's where it gets a little bit wild, you know. And number four, I have the Chicago Bulls. So I have Chris Dunn at point guard, but he is definitely not a cornerstone of your franchise. He can't turn your franchise around. And I really think that they need that one point guard. This point guard, I feel like could be taken at any time in the lottery. So I feel like they wouldn't risk it. And you guys probably know who I'm talking about, so... With the fourth pick, the Chicago Bulls select... 
Darius Garland. Now, he's a dynamic point guard from Vanderbilt. He can score the ball, but he can also pass, and he has a lot of clamps. I mean, he's not like a tremendous defender, but he, like, when he needs to get a stop, he can get a stop. And when he needs to get his team a bucket, he can get a bucket. He's shown a lot of NBA potential throughout his time at Vanderbilt. So I think this will be a good pick for the Chicago Bulls, and I think this is where they'll go at number four. With the fifth pick, the Atlanta Hawks select Garrett Culver. Now, Jared Culver is a shooting guard that can play small forward. And I think that's exactly what the Hawks need on their team. You know, he's a dynamic scorer. And he can also close out a game for you. He averages seven rebounds, 19 points per game, and also times in four assists a game. As we know, Kevin Herter, yeah, he's promising, but also Torian Prince, they might look to trade. And as we know, Trey Young being the leader of that team, Torian Prince needs the ball to score. And I feel like that's not what they need on their team. If you can get a little bit stronger, He'll be a very amazing piece for this team. So yeah, that's where I think the Hawks go at number five. With the sixth pick, the Memphis Grizzlies select. Cam Reddish. Now, Cam Reddish, as we know, he goes to Duke. He only averages 14 points per game, but he's shown a lot of NBA talent, and he shows that his game can translate really well into the NBA. He kind of reminds me of like a Malik Monk, but I still think he'll, he's a little bit more talented. If he went to another college where he'd be by himself, I could see him averaging 20, 21 points per game, but as you know, he's with Zion and RJ and Trey Jones, so he kind of gets faded out of the offense a little bit. But I still think he's a tremendous talent, and the Grizzlies take him at six. So at number seven, alert, trade alert. So we have the Pelicans trading number nine and a top 10 protected pick next year for the number seven pick in the draft. So let's just go over this trade real quick. Now the Hawks have five and seven because they have the Mavericks top five protected pick this year and the Mavericks are probably gonna fall out of the top five. So they're, they're gonna have the seventh pick. Now the Hawks just took Jarrett Culver and now right now they need a big man to pair up with John Collins. And I feel like they could get another big man that I have in mind later in the draft. So if they can get another top 10 protected pick next year i think that would be ideal for them and on the pelican side of things the pelicans don't have a lot of future pieces on their team anthony davis is gonna get traded julius randall is probably not gonna stay alfred page is not a future piece drew holiday he could stick around and have a couple more efficient years but that small forward spot they don't they have kendrick williams there they can't deal with that for a long time so that's why i think they trade up so with the seventh pick DeAndre Hunter. Now, on the season at Virginia, he's averaging 15.2 points per game, five rebounds and two assists, and playing very efficient defense. He could come in and be a future piece for this Pelicans team right away. Now, some people have him going number four, some people go number five. I feel like he'll fall down to seven. There's always that one player that falls down, and I feel like the Pelicans will definitely want to take advantage of this, so they trade and get him, snag him at number seven, so he can be a future piece of that franchise. And even if they do end up trading AD to the Lakers, they can have him and, you know, B.I. and Lonzo, which I don't want to happen. But he could just be another future piece regardless. Now I have the Wizards at number eight. So... With the eighth pick, the Washington Wizards select... Re... Hachi... Hachi... Hachimir, Hachim 2,000 years later. Hachimura. You guys know who I'm talking about. Re Hachimura from Gonzaga. He's also a very special player in this draft, I think. Some people have taken number four. Some people have taken number 14. But I just think that Re, you know, he could play three through five. He's really big and tall, and he's playing really efficient throughout the season. So I think he's just another one of these gems that another team could snag up, and he can have a really efficient NBA career and could be one of the future pieces. <laughs> be one of the future pieces for the Washington Wizards heading in next season. And after trading Otto Porter, Jabari Parker and Bobby Portis really aren't that big of future pieces for the Wizards. They just wanted to get off that Otto Porter contract because he wasn't playing up to what they thought he would. So having Rui coming in and filling that spot to be one of the future pieces for your team, I think the Wizards are doing a good job here by taking Rui Hachimura. Now with the number nine pick, the Atlanta Hawks select Jackson Hayes. 6'11 center coming out of Texas. Some people, again, have him going number four. And some people have him going number 14. I really think he has a lot of NBA potential. He's an athletic center who can get the job done. And he's a really good piece. Now, at the center, the Hawks have Dwayne Dedman. Now, you guys might think John Collins is playing center, but no, he's power forward. So, the Hawks uh, scoop up two really good pieces in the draft. And 
really amazing future pieces that I think can go a long way for their franchise. Yeah, Jackson Hayes can come in and start at that center position. I think both of those rookies, DeAndre Hunter and Jackson Hayes, can start at their positions. So the Hawks really luck out. They, they can get another lottery pick next year if the Pelicans fall out of the top 10. And they also fill their two holes on their team, which exact exactly what they needed to do. Now, whew, with the number 10 pick, Los Angeles Lakers select Romeo Lanford. Now, I just think the Lakers take the best player available here. It's really tough. You know, as you can see, I'm a Lakers fan. I got the new poster over there. We take Romeo Lanford out of Indiana. You know, he's averaging 17 points per game. Pretty efficient. He's just a scorer. You know, he. I think he's just like a worse version of RJ Barrett. He's just someone who can go get a bucket. He needs to work on developing a better three-point shot, but he definitely has potential in the NBA. He might be included in a trade package, but he's one of the best prospects coming into the draft. And I still feel like he could be a top 10 pick and become really efficient in the NBA. So I just think the Lakers take the best player available here. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Now you guys might say, the Lakers should take a center, but if we could re-sign JaVale McGee for a couple more years, we're good. Now tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. Let's try to get to at least 80 comments again. We got 100 last, that, that was, shout out to you guys, 100 comments, that, that's, Anyways, guys, tell me what your mock draft is down below. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this video. Tell me what your guys' top five mock draft will be down below. And I will see you guys in the next video.